Hey, so video seven. Uh, I've had some questions uh, over the last couple of months from people uh, regarding asset packs. Uh, I've got a bunch of packs, you know, that are for sale in the Unreal Marketplace and Unity um, Asset Store, and they want to know how do you put those together? Like, what goes into uh, making a modular set? So uh, we're going to take a real quick look at my Crumbling Ruins set. And um, this won't be uh, anything close to a how-to or a tutorial, but it's going to be more of a, here's the steps, here's the applications that I use, and here's some of the thinking that goes into it. So I hope you find this useful. And we'll do something more, uh, more in-depth in the future. But for right now, I just wanted to give a quick overview to let you know what the process is. So let's get started in Modo. Okay. So typically when I'm getting started with an asset pack, I will uh, try and lay out the basic pieces that I need. And like, like seriously, these are boxes. So really these are uh, they're more promissory notes than anything else. These, this is the number of pieces that I want to create. So you can look and just, you know, uh, using your imagination a little bit, you see these are going to be bricks. Uh, these ones are going to be uh, damaged bricks. You know, these ones will be and yeah, maybe some uh, little chunks of rubble and that kind of stuff. And these will be miscellaneous stones and things. Uh, I find it helpful to to break down how many pieces I'm going to be building. You know, because it keeps me uh, constrained. And when you're a freelancer like I am, your time is valuable. So you need to you know, make sure that every minute you're spending is worth something. And I don't want to just be stuck endlessly in ZBrush making you know, rock after rock after rock when it's not really necessary to sell the pack. You know what I mean? So once this stage is done, uh, we'll jump over to ZBrush and sculpt up the actual assets. And we'll look at that next. And here we are in ZBrush. Now you can see this is the same layout that I had in Modo, except the boxes have been replaced with actual sculpted assets and when I sculpt bricks and rocks uh, at this scale especially I just tend to shear the corners off knock some chunks out and overlay some noisy alphas just to give you some semblance of a rock because it's not important that it looks beautiful here in ZBrush you know what matters is what it's going to look like in the game engine and that normal map is only going to take a certain amount of detail and going beyond that is really uh, kind of pointless. So, and even here, I broke that rule because there's stuff on these rocks that you never see, like these little uh, dots over here on this rock. Uh, those just don't come through uh, in the final normal map because I think I shot for like a 2048 or something. And, and, and with this much stuff on the same UV map, it just doesn't come through. So watch your detail level when you're in ZBrush. You can save yourself a lot of time. So, once we're done with this stage, I would export this mesh to an OBJ and pull it back into Modo to use as my high poly mesh. And uh, you, know, you can't see the counter, I don't think, no. But this is uh, 900,000 triangles approximately. Yeah, which is not huge for something like this, but uh, it's definitely a high poly. So, uh, we'll head back to Modo next. Okay. And so we're back in Modo, and you can see this is my high poly mesh that I, you know, pulled back from ZBrush. It's got all of our little, you know, sculpted details and things in it. And this is what I would use to bake with, but we're not going to bake just yet. Uh, from here, I create the low poly meshes, which you know, look like this. Uh, these are all UV'd and had their smoothing applied and hard edges and all that put in. Yeah, but you can see these are definitely uh, low poly bricks. And you could probably do a cleaner job on this. I mean, this is really me using uh, Decimation Master in ZBrush and then cleaning it up in Modo because you know nobody wants to topple around rocks. It's just, it's tedious. So use the best tool for the job, I guess is the lesson there. But really once I've got these torn down and cleaned up and UV'd and smoothed the way I want them to be, I hop over to Substance Painter. Uh, I do all of my baking uh, in Substance Painter these days. 
So we'll take a look at that next. So here we are in Substance Painter, uh, one of my favorite applications on the planet. Um, I love this thing more than I can really ever tell you. Uh, I do all of my baking in here, I do all of my texturing in here, and it will even export the textures in the way that I need it to be done. But like for example, let's say you're exporting to a game where it requires the metalness in red and the roughness in blue and you know, a special uh, packing for all of the different channels. Um, you can do that all from here and it just spits out textures that will just work in your game engine. I love it. But anyway, uh, enough of my fanboying. Uh, here you can see I've got my low poly mesh pulled in and I've baked the normal map on it. Uh, just using the built-in baker right here. Just you know, pull this up. Here's my hot pile. Here's my cage. Bake. Done. Right? Uh, that's why I love that so much. It's just so easy. So once I have that done, you know, I, I can apply some smart materials that I've you know, that I've created that are based on other ones. And you know, and a little bit of hand painting in here to get rid of some of the stuff that wasn't quite the way I wanted it to look. And I put a couple of tint variances in here to to shake up the visuals a little bit. It's not something you will notice really strongly uh, when you're inside of the engine, but it it does matter because if it's not there you get this monotone gray look to everything and trust me you'll want to experiment with that on your assets so now that i have this textured and baked and ready to go uh, i export the textures and i head back to moto because i do all of my assembly in moto uh, obviously and we'll take a look at that next and so here we are back in moto my old friend. So, uh, once I've gotten to the point where I've baked everything, I've created the texture, and I've exported the textures, I'll pull that diffuse texture uh, back into Moto and apply it to the meshes there. Uh, this way I've got a, a mesh with enough visual information on it that I can start to assemble pieces with it. So here we got all of our rocks. You know, and there's more to this pack than just these rocks, but I chose these as the subset to talk about because it was clearer. But, you know, um, if you're familiar with the pack, you'll know that there's there's stone and floor pieces, and then there's some, um, some metal stuff and wood boards, but they all went through the same process. And ultimately, uh, they're all packed onto their own material. So uh, we're focusing on the bricks for this video, but you can apply it to everything else. So looking down the list here, let's just go with, say, the column. Okay. So, so you probably figured out how the column gets built now. You know, we take the, uh, the individual bricks, and we pull out a selection of them, and we just stack them up. And then I take some of the smaller rocks, and I kind of put them into little crevices like this, just to break up the silhouette a little bit. Not the silhouette, but I guess uh, the visual plane or what have you. And the reason that I went with individual rocks on this is because I wanted to have um, this silhouette happening. Like you can see, if I go into silhouette view, and you know, when you're turning around this thing, you get this interesting, nice jagged silhouette on things. And I really wanted that to get preserved uh, in the in-game meshes. So while that costs a few extra polygons, I think that uh, the visual coolness of that was, you know, was offsetting. Uh, in my opinion. So we'll look at a few others here. There's stuff like the arch. Uh, this was just basically me stacking up a bunch of the bricks and then using a bend modifier to pull it over 100 or uh, 90 degrees. It just gives you that nice arc bend and everything still fits together correctly. And there's issues with this kind of stuff, you know, with normals and smoothing and having to keep things in sync, but that's beyond the scope of this video. We'll talk about that in the future. No worries. And is there anything else in, in here? Oh, here's where I use those little, uh, those miscellaneous rocks. You know, I built just little uh, piles of rocks that are pre-made, and you can use them to just stick in the corners of your scene or whatever you need to do. But this is the way that I looked at how to build the pack. 
like you know with modern video games you take uh, meshes, large meshes, and you uh, put them in the level, you copy them a hundred times, you give them you know, rotation variances or whatever to make them look unique, but ultimately it's a large level made up of, made up of a bunch of little pieces. And what I wanted to do with this pack was just bring that down one level and say, okay, well here's a prop, and the prop is made up of a bunch of little pieces. So instead of having to model these monolithic wall pieces, I just modeled the individual bricks and rocks. And, and it turned out pretty good in my opinion. You know, I like the way this uh, this happened. And these pieces uh, look good in the engine. And it's all very modular. And actually, let's uh, let's jump over to UE4 and we'll look at the final product for a minute. And finally, we arrive uh, in the game engine. Uh, this is Unreal Engine 4, and you can see all the meshes that come with the pack are over here on the uh, uh, left side. And you can see you know, there's the arches and the chains and the columns and all that. Uh, these were all created uh, using those building blocks we saw uh, inside of Modo. And uh, you can get a lot of variety out of it. You know, and there's a lot that I didn't explore because I just didn't have time. I mean, eventually you have to call it and say, okay, that's enough pieces and move on, right? But uh, once you get these inside of the game engine, you, you started layering them, right? So you have this wall piece, and this column piece, and this chunk of rubble. And you start to slap them together in interesting ways. And you build a game out of it. And you just pull out pieces you want to use, place them, uh, make them different heights, whatever you're going to do. Pull that over there and say, well, maybe, you know, maybe I'd like to well, what should we do? Put a pile of rubble here for a little flavor. Put a pile of bricks up there. You give it a slight rotation. And you just keep layering up your game world. And eventually you end up with a completed level that looks customized, but all came from this small set of building blocks. So I hope that was helpful. I'm going to put a link in the description to the asset pack on the Unreal Engine uh, Marketplace. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and leave them in the comments, and we'll t and I'll do my best to answer them. And if you have suggestions for future videos, let me know. So thanks for watching. That's it. God, what am I doing?